How are you getting on? Um, welcome to Pig's Kitchen Podcast. This is episode one, brought to you by myself, Dan Rankin, and my special guest, Fintan Gavin, one of the true Irish greats of Irish poker. Thank you for saying that, Dan. <laughs> so Absolute hard. pleasure to be here, literally in your kitchen. Yeah, in the kitchen. <laughs> we said, let's do this. Enough talking about it. So I guess I gave a basic background uh, why I'm doing this. Um, well, while I was growing up, I had a big interest in like TV, film, and radio, and it's something I've always wanted to do. And I just said, "It's time, let's do this." What do you think? <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be here, Dan. Good stuff. You are um, an absolute inspiration in the poker world. Not for poker, mind you. <laughs> no. For your tunes. If anyone's ever been at an after party with Dan, you can be guaranteed top tunes. So. Uh, <laughs> When it comes to media and music, he's the man. Thanks very much, Fintan. Right, yeah. So I guess I'll give a brief introduction of where I'm from. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Dublin. I moved to Leash when I was 12. Um, I grew up on the hard cold mean streets of Mount Melick. <laughs> Big shout out to the Mount Melick boys. You know who you are. <laughs> and I guess my first introduction to anything got to do with radio. There was uh, people in Mount Melick who had a, had a pirate radio station. And uh, I was like, geez, that's something I'd like to do someday. <laughs> so, so They still do pirate radio stations? <laughs> do, yeah. Geez, I thought that was something from the 60s and 70s. Uh, I moved to Leash when I was uh, 20, or I moved to Galway when I was 21. I'm here for five years now. Um, I've been living on Shop Street. Um, I love it here. And uh, I said, fuck it, let's do a podcast. Well, guys, if anyone... Uh uh, anyone visiting Galway, <laughs> definitely I recommend uh, have, uh, give, give Dan a, a shout and have a look at the pad here. It's absolutely incredible. It's a, it's a pure uh, poker school. That's what it is. It's like four or five poker players live here, but they get up to anything up to eight or nine players every night. And it's incredible. I mean, I, I know a few, few of my friends have played, played yeah. here and they've, lear they've learned quite a lot and proved their game immensely. Now, of course, I'm always saying I'll, I'll you know, <laughs> come in, come <laughs> come in, in. Yeah. and jeez, I wish I did because my, uh, my online results are so bad lately, you know. Well, well, you don't have a bad hand in mob anyway, Fintan, that's for sure. Yeah, I like, to think, I like to think I have a slight edge on live, you know. I do enjoy live, that's my love. I love poker, I love live poker. So, yeah, um, yeah. you've got quite, that, quite yeah. the bluster at the table for it anyway, and uh, you're quite the character. Well, thank you for saying that, <laughs> appreciate that, yeah. No, live poker is, is, is my first love, and that's what, I, that's what I'm into, you know. Yeah. So, um, and that's how I met you, Dan. I remember in the Eglinton, uh, I suppose, you used yeah. to come in. I was yeah. just getting to that. Anyway. That's right, in the smoking room. Yeah. And, uh, you <laughs> so know. Trying to, get, trying to get the buy-in for tournaments, <laughs> not knowing what was going yeah, on. Yeah, I'd, yeah. Get the, I'd get the train down from Galway, and I think I was going to Vegas. Like, yeah. Yeah, fucking, oh, yeah. yeah, I was 18 or 19. I was like, okay, this is cool. I can do this. I said when I was yeah. when I was seventeen, I, uh, I fell through a thirty-five foot roof onto my head, and uh, wow, yeah, I was lucky enough. Yeah, well, that, explains, that, that actually explains, explains what, a few things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thirty-five feet. Wow, yeah. that was sore. So, and uh, what happened? Did you have surgery? Um, basically, I was on top of a roof trying yeah. trying to get my friend off because he was drunk, and I yeah. was on my uh, second, what a hero. Second, second can of beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went all all the way along the apex, and uh, yeah. got went as I went to sit down beside my friend. The roof collapsed from underneath me, and uh, I was lucky enough. Now I only got a few stitches, and I was out of hospital within forty eight hours. So, uh, yeah. That's incredible. I would have died without ever playing poker for or ever meeting you, huh? That's amazing. And come here, did you send a bill to your mate? <laughs> no, no, no. There was no <laughs> okay, lawsuit at that, okay, that time no, anyway. No, no, okay. So I guess then after yeah. that, my friends were come over to visit a lot and I didn't go out much for the next few months. And uh, we started playing cash game at the table for okay. like two, two euro buy-in. Yeah, Someone yeah. would win and they'd have a free taxi home yeah. in Chinese. And uh, I'd come back from school and uh, I, my father would be using the computer playing poker, and I'd be like, here, what are you doing? Get out, I need to use there. And he'd be right. like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> then, uh, so he used to, he plays online, Vincent Girofalo, yeah? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how I got into it. I'd watch right. him, and I'd be like, what, Dad, what about doing this, or what about doing that? Okay, so, uh, okay. Amazing. So, yeah. Good stuff. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, from there, I went, I yeah. started going up to town when I was 18, and I was playing in... Uh, the, the Druid and Dempsey's in, in Mount Malik and they used to have like 10, 15, 20 euro games. Then uh, it was like, I don't know, it's like being in Galway, I suppose. It's a big yeah, yeah, it was huge, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one one night we had uh, 86 players in a pub tournament, which is unheard of. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But then were the days you're going back six, seven years ago, maybe yeah, more, maybe, maybe eight, maybe, maybe eight, eight or nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. That's well, that was that was the boom. I mean, I remember. I, I mean, I got into poker when I was young. My my older brother used to um, he used to have a game in the house. Yeah. And he used to bring all the young lads around and he was hustling them, basically, you know. Yeah. But I used to always sit right beside the brother. I mean, I was only 10 or 11 at the time, uh, maybe 12. But I used to sit beside the brother and I used to just watch him how to play, you yeah. know. And I remember after weeks and weeks then, uh, I pulled a bluff on the brother. And I was <laughs> like, that's when I got into poker. I loved it. Like, Love you know what it, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like... yeah. Now, we had... Um, we had it. We had the doorbell went one day, and it was one of the old men of the kids that was playing, giving yeah. out like, "Yeah, took my son's pocket money," like giving out to the brother, like you know. But just very funny. But that's how I started, like you know. Yeah. But uh, then it just kind of takes off from there, doesn't it? Like I mean, I I yeah. I, I watch people like Gavin Ayer and uh, Lee Hammer from Portage. They were coming over to the tournament in the Drew because it was getting such popularity. Yeah. Big shout out to the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Gav, <laughs> on your recent success. Keep yeah. it up. We'll have, have up. a short Keep interview with yeah. him later. Yeah. And uh, so from there, I heard about like the likes of yourself and Jude and Derek, and I was like, well, I think the natural progression would be to go down to Galway more. And it just so happened that two of my friends were living down here, so I just started coming down to the Eggington, and geez, the excitement of it all. I remember folding pocket Jack's face up. <laughs> I hope it wasn't to me, because <laughs> oh, no. it was probably the wrong move. <laughs> so yeah. when I lived in Mount Malik, I, I had an opportunity to move over and rent a room off Gavinator and I snapped that up. I'd say one of my biggest regrets was not using the opportunity more to learn more and like I just you're young and you think you know course, everything course. like a little shit. <laughs> yeah. So course, I think I'd done that for like a year and a half and then I moved straight to Galway after I came sixth in the UK IPT um for twelve thousand yeah, which was grand right yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just around my twenty twenty first birthday so Yeah yeah that was good. Yeah I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Galway, it's funny, Galway had, like, say from 10 years ago, it's it had a name for live poker. Yeah. And it had good tournaments. Yeah. Like, it had, outside Dublin and possibly Cork, it was the best place in Ireland to play live poker. Yeah. Because it had good structured, you know, medium, medium, pretty good events, like, you know what I mean? But now, like, as well as producing quality live players... Now we seem to be producing online players. Now I could be totally <laughs> off the mark here, but that's oh we came from Leash Fitting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're living in our turf now. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, no Galway is definitely has a tradition of holding. There is without a doubt the top top live players here, and now we have top online yeah. players. You know, kind of. I th- and I think I think Jude and Derek and the like have to be mentioned here because I think they've done an awful lot for the game. Not that fucking yeah, Jude yeah. would ever explain anything to you or teach anything to you. You know, <laughs> but calling uh, them out now. <laughs> no, like Jude. In fairness, like he's he's done it all online. He's yeah. done it. He's been the, yes. one of the top players in the world. You know, certainly in Europe, he's been in the top well, 10, 10, 20, 10, like, 10, yeah, 10 years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, so, so I mean, when people who are rubbing shoulders with him and just actually are living in the same town as him. That inspires them. Yeah. They say, well, look, if he can do it, I can do Definitely. it. Do you know what I mean? Like so you're heroes when you're watching them online and suddenly you're friends with them. And you're absolutely, them for a yeah, pub, yeah, like. absolutely. It raises everyone's game, you know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And then, so, so I suppose I started living here, you know, I'm here nearly five years now, and it kind of takes a hold of you. And um, I have a lot, a lot of interests and a lot of interesting friends from different walks of life. And um, I primarily, it's going to be a poker podcast. But uh, I also I have a big deep passion for uh, house music. Um, I'm going to talk about, about mental health, and uh, I really love UFC. Obviously, I mean, if they give Conor McGregor a mention, he's okay. absolutely he's one yeah, of my yeah. biggest inspirations. Anyway, yeah. uh, every day before I start grinding, I I watch a video of him. Like he just does a lot for me, you know. Wow, uh, yeah, like yeah. it's like my my meditation or something. Like gets me focused and geared up. Like uh, when he when he. When he won the Mendez fight, like I mean, I was just pumped, and I, I went. I remember I went to see Fleetwood Mac the previous night, and I was just in a really, really good form. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Where was so, Fleetwood Mac playing? Uh, it's in Dublin. In the good, o- yeah, the O2. yeah, yeah, yeah. The atmosphere quality, was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, quality gig. We we got like yeah. uh, really good seats up on the balcony, and then uh, we were right beside the bar and uh, the the jacks or whatever. And then the girl came over and was like, "Oh fuck, we're in trouble here." And then they moved us to, to even better seats further down. Brilliant, so that was brilliant. class, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I came back and I remember I was just so pumped. I had a sweeping brush around the thing, going nuts. 
so then when all the hype about the Aldo fight when it finally went down it just was it, it was overwhelming and underwhelming all at the same time like I couldn't believe he sure, sure. stopped him so quick yeah amazing amazing um, I mean I really really can't wait for the next fight I really see him fucking doing the job yeah, and having yeah. the two belts you know good one yeah, yeah. well he's he's the thing, thing about Connor like he, you know he plays a bit of poker and his old man used to go to the Red Cow and play as well yeah yeah but he's super focused yeah and like he's complete, he has a vision and he just doesn't, yeah, nothing stops it's, him, does it's it? The, like, you it's know? the belief, it's the belief yeah, in himself yeah, is yeah, just yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to get a bit of that. So yeah. I guess I'll talk a bit about, see, for people back home, they don't know much about online poker or poker in general, I guess we need to cover every angle. Um, I've been playing poker professionally now for a few years, um, something I really like. I would have, would have recommended it as a career a few years ago. I'm not so sure now the game's getting yeah, so yeah, tough, you know. Yeah, it is tough, isn't it? Yeah, online yeah. especially, yeah. Um, I'm ho hoping to play some more live tournaments. I mean, just played the IPC that was ran by you. It was absolutely yeah, fantastic, yeah. yeah. Great event. We lowered the buy-in, Dan. Yeah. And um, we didn't have any online feeders to it, you know. Yeah. So we lowered the buy-in and it was absolutely, the buzz was electric because it was loads of recreational players who were just thrilled to be there yeah and it just reminded me of the old days you know Good and stuff, straight yeah. straight freeze outs none of this rebuy re-entry crack you got and, 240 uh, runners yeah and yeah they were buzzing like yeah it was great atmosphere and uh good weekend yeah so yeah, it was. It's always great crack over at the Radisson. It's a really great nice venue. Hotel. Yeah, it's, it's the number one well. venue in Ireland. It has to be the number one venue in Ireland. I mean, all these uh, any any bigger tournaments in Ireland. Here is the number one venue in Ireland. Ah, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Pig's kitchen table. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, so have you much planned on the live the live scene this year? Well, well, we have a vision for um, uh, a poker dedicated club. Uh, one of Europe's biggest. That's yeah. what we're looking at for Ireland now. I think it's ready. Uh, I think the market in Ireland, it's very fragmented. Uh, there's clubs spread out everywhere. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of cash games every night in Ireland. I mean, there could be 30 or 40 different cash games, but they don't start till like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Yeah. You know, there's nowhere players can go any time of the day and be guaranteed action. Uh, we think there's a market for that. And um, we're looking to put together... Um, you know, 30, 35 table uh, poker dedicated card, card room with, you know, massive events yeah. and uh, running 24-7. So, yeah, we're looking, at, we're looking at that for Dublin. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. And, like, how, how, how far in the future do you see this happening? Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it's the, I mean, there's a lot of hurdles to cross, you know yeah. what I mean, between planning. We wanted, because it's poker dedicated, we believe we can get a full bar restaurant in there, you know, yeah. and still be, still adhere to the law, like, you know. So uh, there's a couple of planning issues we have to get around, but we've, we've, we've ID'd the venue, uh, we have the backers, so... Yeah, it looks it looks like it could happen this side this side you know two thousand and sixteen maybe even as early as May or June you know that's great yeah just after the yeah. EPT Dublin absolutely yeah it's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah, massive yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah absolutely yeah looking forward I want to try it. try win a ticket for that myself now yeah 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 it's um, the five grand is is the biggest buy in in Ireland since I believe the last EPT here which was maybe on uh, eight nine years ago you know yeah so. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, uh, it's. I think Dave Dave Curtis had a had a. You know, he was part of the team that are you know got it Ireland, which is yeah. great. Well done, Dave. Um, a lot of events. I think there's sixty plus events on the schedule. There's the UKIPT, the thousand buy in, which yeah. which is close to my heart. I love the UKIPTs. I'm hoping to play that myself. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I don't know about the EPT crowd. just yet. We'll yeah, uh, take yeah. take it one step at a time. I have a massive uh, online series now. To, Turbo Championships of Online Poker starting next Thursday. I'm really looking forward to those. Um, they be my kind of structure, my kind of tournaments. I really like them, so I'm hoping to put in a lot of hard nice work. One. Hard nice work one. and dedication. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? That's a new series on stairs, isn't it? The it's Turbo. It's been on there a few years. Oh, they have, they have years, the Spring yeah. Championships, they have the World yeah. Championships, and they have the T-Coupe, so they're the three. Oh, sorry, it's not the Turbo It's not a Turbo no, Championship. The, the the, these, these are the T-Coupe, the Turbo Championship of Online oh, Poker. Oh, it is Turbo, for, yeah. For 10 days. So, right, okay. So yeah. it's all Turbo events. Yeah. Yeah, sounds, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to do a detox anyway. It's, uh, nice it's, one, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Cleanse 9. Um, yeah. So that's 9 days, so it's on for 10 days. So the first two days, it's a drink a aloe vera gel yeah um, it's it tastes fine it's grand you have all your supplements your, your vitamins and your sure, protein sure. and then 
on days three to nine I can have a thousand calories and it's really good for the head it clears out the system of course, and, course. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd do you recommend. find you get headaches on that for the first few uh, days I think the hardest part of it all is just no no caffeine whatsoever right no uh, caffeine yeah yeah, yeah. yeah okay. or no alcohol <laughs> yeah no alcohol yeah that's my problem yeah yeah well best of luck with that yeah yeah and I've started playing more more tournaments in the eggs and I want to try uh, get more familiar with the with the live scene again because Maybe I could take pick, leaf out one of your books there or something. When you're in the, when you're in the right place yeah. for life, because the Eglinton is buzzing. There's you don't know there's good solid cash games there every night. Yeah, uh, they have a good tournament every week. The Wednesday night is like it's. I think it's the toughest tournament in Ireland. I mean, it really is. It really <laughs> you is. think so? Ah, it's I the toughest weekly weekly tournament, live weekly tournament. I can't think uh, of another one like. I remember. Know? I remember years ago when I first started came out. I keep re- referencing that or whatever. But there was a team event on, and uh, yeah. it was great to meet everyone. I remember being put into a tournament by Ivan Donny. He's a, oh, a, yeah, a yeah, normal yeah, horse when they see one or whatever. Ah, yeah. So, yeah. I guess. Um, reached a point now where the tournaments are starting to get bigger again I remember it was kind of, yeah. kind of dying off there yeah for a, big time I think there's a buzz yeah definitely a buzz back in the economy yeah so uh and I think there's more new people are coming into poker now you know and there's like females are coming in you know it's a lot more used you know it's not more friendly like you know yeah yeah it's yeah. good and uh, so I guess I'll talk a bit about um last year I I had a bit of a crazy year I went to a uh, Few, few too many music festivals <laughs> bit, and stuff. Bit, bit of a crazy year. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. It was absolutely insane. I mean, um, yeah, I just uh, I play a lot online. Would do really well, and then the following yeah. month it would just be, go be a crash course. I remember I, I went to Body and Soul and Forbidden Fruit, and then the following weekend I I was just a bit fucked or whatever. It's a bit rattled, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I actually had my biggest score online ever. Then I, I won the Sunday Storm, so that nice was uh, nice that kind of shaped my year a bit. And then the, the work, Sunday Storm. How yeah. many players in that? There yeah. was uh, thirty-one thousand. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. sounds like fucking thirty-one thousand players. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, it's this cool story actually because I yeah. was I was in bed and I wasn't going to go, go play at all. I went to order a pizza and they didn't answer and I was like, oh fuck this, I'll go over to Dunn's. I went over to Dunn's and I was like, right, I'm just going to start grinding and then there you go. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> then, uh, That's a $10 buy-in, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a huge, buy-in. yeah, yeah. 31 yeah, pounds. What was, what was for first? It's about uh, 50 grand for uh, first place. 28,000. Oh, 28,000, yeah, yeah. I actually got more than first place. I didn't do a deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was um, from 100 out, there wasn't that many good players left, so I, I had a serious edge and it was... It felt like it was just gonna happen. Um, yeah, I've been. Yeah. I've been so hit. was there a deal done? Mm, yeah, I done a deal and got more than first place. When? When? What? How many uh, handed? Four handed, I think. Four handed. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. That's then I won fantastic. An eight, chi- eight million chip pot. I was like, oh, I'm not looking back from this anyway. That's right, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. And then I, uh, I played the world championships. They were, they were tough. Now they were. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. That man, there's just so many good players in them all the time. It's kind of, it's hard to know. Hard to just put in that grind for like 20 days and just constantly, you're just, uh, it's tough. I mean, uh, I had a lot of runs and stuff, so I'm hoping to just take a more relaxed approach towards this year now. Um, yeah, of course, Well, course. not for the tea coop anyway. They're not yeah. called turbos for Yeah, of course, of course. Well, I think, in my unqualified opinion, I, I think for online player, I think fitness is, is as important for live players as it is for online players. Yeah. I mean, be, some people have the impression if you're online, ah, you can... You know, you can slouch around your underpants and eat what you want or whatever. But yeah, I, I, I think fitness is every much as important for the online grinders as it is for the live guys, you know? Yeah. I think it's huge. It is like, um, I think in the the way the game is evolving and yeah. like uh, just the, the evolution of it all. And like you just need your mind so much more because people are getting so much better. I think fitness yeah. is yeah. It's crucial. It's so yeah. important. And it. When you go to the gym, it's giving you a routine, it's getting you out of bed, it's giving you a purpose before mm-hmm. you even start grinding. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people lack in that. Like mm-hmm. they, they're they're just eating pizza, drinking cold cola all the time. And yeah, it's, it's yeah, really yeah. Tough, you know? Yeah, definitely if there was one thing I'd say to a new any new players or anyone taking up the game on a serious level, like I would say the number one thing is fitness yeah. and discipline. Yeah, it'd have to be. I mean, if I could do it all again, I'd do it differently. Definitely. Do it differently. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. You've done a lot of fitness yourself uh, Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm a slow learner. I'm a really yeah. fucking slow learner. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm only getting to learn that now, Dan, you know? Yeah. You know, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of prudence, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, fitness, just so important. Like, you know, and you can't defy the odds, you know? You no. just can't, you know? 
you just like I think if you get a good routine and like I I, I aim to start playing at like half five every day which is way yeah. too, way too late like right but right. Uh, when I go on to bed at five and six in the morning I mean I'm making up at two or three I'm just you know I'm not ready to yeah, play until four or five course. so I'm trying to get a better routine and of course you know and can I ask are they, all these games all these uh, like the tournaments that you play now online yeah are they like late at night or is there a schedule earlier in the day that you if could I, play yeah I could get in trouble for answering this one. Right, right, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I personally lo love the grind. I play from half five until I reg till about twelve, and I'm usually finish by about three. Right. But, uh, so you don't reg after midnight, really, do you? Um, no. Well, yeah. like I I sometimes might reg the turbos up to about okay. two a.m. Okay. Um, but I, there is the option there for me to grind at an earlier time. I okay. just prefer the games that are on yeah. in the evening. Yeah. There's more turbos and I play a lot of turbos. Yeah. So okay, of course, of course, of course. It's like... No, I always wonder that about, like, and even with the, you know, since Black Friday, with, yeah. this, with the American players being cut off or whatever, did that change the timetable? Did yeah. it shift the five hours or eight hours or which you think it would, do you know? Yeah, it's like... If I lived in Canada or somewhere, I think I'd play an earlier grind. Like yeah. the, ga the games are softer, and there's like less good players, and there is some really decent tournaments. I just um, I'm very fixated on the half five to the course, three a.m. Okay. grind. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, my goal this year, I'm I'm going to be saving. I'm hoping to move to Berlin next year. Nice one, yeah. For the yeah. zones and the boom yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Capital <of> underground. <laughs> like the techno, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Good um, so I want to try put some extra hours in over at the casino and um, t take it from there. But uh, I think I think I would, I'd like to try learning a different game at some point. Like I I've been doing the same grind for a long time. I I, I don't really I can't really get used to playing like on five different sites. But yeah, I could play maybe twenty tables at once. So I guess I've, like, see, I've seen you. It's fucking incredible. I guess I guess for people, yeah. it is primarily a poker podcast. But uh, I don't. We're going to get deep, dank, and dirty from time to time. But I want to keep it as lighthearted as possible. But I guess if we're talking about, it, we should explain to people what I actually do. Like so, like any one game is luck, but over time it's skill. So I try to play as many games in a day as possible to eliminate the luck factor over time. Um, I trying to get better at the mats. I play anywhere between. 15 to 25 tables at a time um, I wouldn't do that if I was playing more high stakes tournaments like I'm just kind of used to what I do um, I I have like I have charts to help me um, I'm just very used to the grind I put in uh, it's a very rewarding career and I would recommend it but it's a lot of hard work dedication and uh, it's, it's a lot of ups and downs smiles and frowns click a mouse lose a house fint and yeah yeah and uh would you would you see yourself playing much online poker yourself I, do, do you know what i uh, i always put in about 10 to 15 hours a week i mean yeah you know but i play shorthanded kind of hyper turbos like you know the multi i just find the multi tournaments uh, for me online they're just too long and they're too energy consuming for me. Yeah. You know, I'm just not able for the for the you know, for the ten, twelve hour tournaments online. No, oh. I, do, I do play satellites. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I do quite well and I, 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 I had to stop sites. playing the satellites myself, yeah. There yeah. wasn't having much success with them. Right, right. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Lesson learned I, I wish yeah. in hindsight now I wish I stopped playing them years ago. Like trying <laughs> right, to get into right. the live event so I could look yeah, yeah. like you, the likes of Yeah. You're the closest man to win in an E B T in Ireland so far. Just second yeah, place yeah, had a good, had a good now. run, yeah, in Barcelona. That was a really nice tournament. I, yeah, <laughs> so that, I, I like that tournament. A yeah. nice tournament, yeah, yeah it was well, a nice yeah. tournament, yeah, yeah. Well, there was some buzz back. That's yeah, when great. I when I first met you. I, I came in and I was like congratulating you. Yeah. You'd always have time for me, which I always like. Was like, okay, I'm just some young lad there. The boys back home used to call me the poker slut because I was always trying to meet the next person up. You know, right, right, so right, then, right. So then when I um. When I played the UKIBT, I hadn't, I hadn't a bean coming into my 20, 21st birthday. Uh, I was randomly selected out of 256 people to have Jude Ainsworth come to my house. Like, ah, so, yeah, so, I remember so, that. I remember to, that. So, wow. They say you should never meet your heroes, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but it's great, though, like, for any young lads coming up and they see they see all the prospects of the career and how much money they can make and all that. Like uh, the last time I was back in Mount Melic, there was a guy telling me he he, he quit in leaving sir because he wanted to be a professional poker player. Like okay, me. Like, that's not a uh, that's not. <laughs> but I was like, I, okay, I think people should have yeah, all yeah. the knowledge and the details. Um, I 
yeah. I, I want to give like an accurate representation of what we actually do. Like, of course, there's, a, course. there's no Lamborghinis, but maybe we're not stuck for a meal or a roof yeah, at the well, same time. I mean, just reminds me of a quick, very brief story. Porrick, uh, my friend Porrick Parkinson, told me he said, uh, absolutely, met, yeah, yeah, but he said he met a lady there, uh, uh, an acquaintance of his. I say, Porrick, my young fella is uh, he's taking up poker now full time, yeah, and uh, you know, he, he wanted to ring you. Do you know what I mean? And get a bit of advice, you know? And Porky said, tell him not to bother ringing me. Uh, tell him to write to me because he won't be able to afford... He'll just about to be able to afford the postage stamp. Don't mind the phone call. Yeah. If he's going to start playing full-time. In other words, it's like... It's such a hard uh, career to pick, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that guy is... I mean... That gave up his leave and cert to play. It just doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the, no. the leave and cert would actually, <laughs> the stu- the ver- the, even the discipline of doing the leave and cert and the study and all that, that would actually improve his chances of being a professional player. Yeah. So if you see him, uh, tell him to go back to school. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't very. Ha- I didn't know what to tell him at the yeah, time. Yeah, I was yeah. like, it, it can be. It's, it's a, it can be a. Pa- you need a passion for it. You need to be almost obsessed, like as. You, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Um, but you need you need every advantage possible, and doing the leaving would be yeah. an extra advantage. Then you know what I mean. Yeah. See, I lo- I absolutely love what I do, but I think I am uh, as I get a bit older, I want to might maybe have some form of backup plan. You know, I mean, it's good to have education, something to rely on. If anything, absolutely. Many well, many times yeah. I've thought maybe not packing it in, but you have a bad month and you're like, oh, absolutely, fuck this yeah, there. it's very, I, Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, after the World Championships there, October, November, December kind of time was a tough, tough grind for me. Absolutely, it's tough. It's so tough. I mean, it's getting depending, and it's so, it's the one job that costs you money. I mean, most people go to work, (laughs) they get paid. But like, you know, I can go to work sometimes and not only am I not getting paid, but I actually pay to work, you know, so... It it, yeah. it it is tough, but you you can spin the tunes, Dan. Do you know what I mean? You've always something to back back the, you up. The there. tunes, yeah. Um, I have. Um, I said it's primarily a poker podcast, but I want to have different guests on. Um, I'm really good friends with one of my best friends is the DJ, uh, Steve Baker, aka Ninja Tips. Big shout out to him. Um, I have got one of my best friends from back back in Leash in Mount Melick, uh, Robert Malloy, he's producing music now and it's really good. So I'm going to throw the two of them together and see what they can create. So I think uh, big things are on the horizon anyway. And um, I guess this is the start of it. Uh, hopefully it takes off. Take from there. Good, good, Do good. Do you like music yourself, Hinton? Um, yeah, well, it depends on the mood. Yeah, <laughs> depends on the music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Depends absolutely. on clothes you have on. I love the tunes. Day. Yeah, I absolutely love the tunes. <laughs> yeah. But um, I suppose it's a good moment to say... Uh, R.I.P. to David Bowie. He was a true legend, true yeah, icon. Absolutely. I mean, um, he he's just a great, great idol for anyone that's having an identity crisis throughout their life and just have belief in what they want to do. And I think it's, I think it was awesome what he did. He changed the game. And incredible. Any, any game changer out there uh, gets my vote. Anyway, yeah, incredible. Sure. Absolutely yeah. incredible. So what we were saying about Parry Parks and actually reminded me of one of my funniest stories when um, yeah. he, he was drinking there but he, the, when he won the was it the UK what was it called then was it the IPC or the UK uh, it was, it was both it was, the, it, was the, <laughs> it was both the first UK IPT was an IPC yeah you just and, reminded uh, me of that yeah. poor Porrick oh man he was he was in some state that year yeah and he, fe- he fell off his chair and uh, he said he pumped his hand and said player down brilliant that was absolutely brilliant. good yeah. great yeah man. He acted uh, that year. Some um, character. He, he was on the rip so much that um, he, did some some of the staff he got into a bit a bit argy bargy with like nothing like yeah. Porrick Porrick's an absolute gentleman, yeah. but he really rubbed a few people up the wrong way, and because he was so drunk, he actually came across worse than he was. Yeah, you know? of course. So I was called to one side by uh, some of the poker stars people, and they said, "Look, the you know." We can't work in these conditions with this guy abusing us, you know. Uh, someone has to go, you know. Yeah. It's either us or him, you know. Yeah. So I said, oh, yeah, let me talk to him, you know. And this is, like, this is day two or three. I'm not sure. It's just before the final table. So it's in the morning before the restart of the tournament. Mm. And Park has a load of chips. Yeah. But he was so pissed, like the night before he I think he stayed up all night as well but I went looking for him anyway yeah and he came off the lift and you want to see him Dan the state of him <laughs> I support he black all around his ah, face. Stop, he, stop, he liked stop, the old Guinness he he went in for breakfast he'd egg on his glass on his glass <laughs> lens 
So I said, Park man, I said, you're getting me in big trouble here. You, I says, you have to. I says, you have to calm down. You, like, they're talking about, you know, disqualifying you from the tournament. And, and Park looks at me, he goes, sure, am I, I'm not in the tournament, am I? <laughs> he was still in the tournament, he didn't know. And he went on to win it. <laughs> I tell yeah. you, it's, it's Galway. Galway true, bring, true bring, story. brings it out in people, uh, you yeah, know. Yeah. I remember, um, like we were saying, I used to play a lot of satellites. I was always trying to get into the IPC myself. I, I was playing a satellite in the Eglinton and uh, to no avail anyway. And uh, Fergal Nealon actually came over to me, which uh, I really respected at the time. Uh, the way the way you approached me is like, oh, I really like the way you play. Would you be interested in, in being staked into the turn? The two grand buy-in, like, I mean, it's gone Brilliant. from two grand to two fifty. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And Brilliant. I was like, uh, he's like, I'd be able to get, put up one grand if you can put up the other grand. And I said, jeez, uh, I wouldn't have a grand. It's going up to Christmas. So the next day, I went down to play a satellite in the morning, and uh, Leash Hammer, my friend, was in the first satellite. So I said I'd come back and play the second one, and uh, I, th th there was no second one. So I had. I went up, to, went up to the bookies. Like I wouldn't be one for bat, backing horses now at all. But I was like, this is my last shot. So, <laughs> Try and spin up the so grand I, even I, money shot. I went in and put 150 euro on a random horse at seven to one, and it won. Oh, and wow. I, I, rang, I rang him back up. I have the grand. Wow. So that's one of my craziest stories. Wow, anyway. that's incredible. And then it was my first live tournament ever to play. And I had uh, Marty Smith, J.P. Kelly, Bernard yeah. Dunn. Uh, bust all soon. We're, we're all at yeah, all, Johan, my, all yeah, on my yeah. table. Like that was an incredible uh, tournament. That was. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember limping under the gun. I said I wouldn't be getting into big into strategy on the podcast now, but I, I thought you'd appreciate this one. Yeah. I remember at the time I, I limped under the gun with three five of diamonds, and there was a raise and a load of calls. It came back around to me. I was like, I'm oh, after telling the story about how I got into this tournament. If I re raise here, like I have to have aces, you know. Yeah, and I just yeah. put in a big raise, and everyone folded. I showed, <laughs> showed the three five. I don't think I get away with a move like that well, these days. Well, anyway. well, you were. You're ahead of your time there, Dan. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that's good, yeah. Well, I, I guess uh, the boys used to call me the mad genius, yeah. I, think, I, think <laughs> I don't know about the genius <laughs> part, oh, but no. they got one part of that right. <laughs> it definitely, definitely calmed down a bit, yeah, uh, yeah. that's for sure. So uh, who would be your favourite poker player and why? Wow, that's a, that's a really interesting question. So but but uh, uh, you know what? I have great respect for Andy Black. Andy Black, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, he stood the test of time. Um, you know, he's he's been at it like 20, 20 years plus, 25 years. He's back now again with a new with a new fresh approach. He's changed his game throughout the years to the different styles. Yeah. You know, I've, you know, I think Andy, I'd, I'd have a lot of respect for Andy. I have huge respect for the likes of Jude, do you know what yeah, I mean, who can yeah. do it online and live. I mean, there's very few people that can do that. Like, you and know, get the live secrets. Myself, absolute yeah. quality, like, you know, and even Derek and the likes of Gilly, like, you know, who are quality live, multi-table, totally different styles, you know what yeah. I mean? But yeah, I suppose if Gilly, you're... Gilly, if you're listening, you're a donkey. <laughs> yeah, 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 oh yeah. He's well used to hearing that, you know, but I tell you he's one thing... He's had enough, yeah, he's had the success he's, he's, to back it up, that's he's for one sure, the, yeah. yeah, he's one of the toughest players to play against, you know. But look, I mean, I'd probably Andy Black would be, you know... I'd say I, I'd respect Andy above any player that I know personally. Definitely. Yeah, I think uh, the whole the mindset approach is something I want to get a yeah, bit more into. Yeah. Um, I said I haven't gone to that many countries because I've stayed all, all the time in Galway, but I'm well-travelled in my head anyway, Fintan. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. So don't I'm trying it. to take a more relaxed and calm approach towards what I'm yeah, doing yeah. because um, you, just, you just burst, don't you? Absolutely. So maybe like I think it's everything true, true uh, like the meditation he's done and all that maybe has really helped him to absolutely his success, no like, doubt know? about that yeah. absolutely no doubt about it yeah so there's the number one light player in Ireland oh, yeah, we, we have a guest, guest coming down, coming, he's coming down for his, this is down. a secret of his success he's coming <laughs> down here for tips <laughs> I was just saying about winning an EPT <laughs> dreaming about winning oh, an EPT oh, 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 got his ticket there fucking so uh, I guess that's nearly it, Fenton. We're nearly wrap it up. Um, hopefully now I'll see a, a few final tables over the course of the next fucking... That's, that's the idea. I mean, yeah, that's the idea. I hope uh, there's a few podium finishes left of me podium. yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you're one of the all-time greats anyway, Irish poker. Well, and, that's and a really would, nice thing to say. I yeah. on the UK yeah, yeah. circuit for sure. Yeah, that's a really Yourself nice thing to Tom say. Tom Ward, I think, are going to be two favourite <laughs> characters. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 great guy. Quick story, big shout out to Tom yeah, Ward. Come on, Lordy. You're due a visit to Galway, Absolutely, buddy. Absolutely, Tom. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'll tell you how I actually met Tom. Tom's one of the one of the best characters out there, really. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, I was in a lift and we were going upstairs and I go, hey, i seen you on TV. And I was okay. like, it, it's a, one of my philosophies or, or statements I would, I've lived by would be, if you don't open your mouth, you'll never find out. Like, Absolutely, I mean, how yeah. are you going to meet people if you, yeah, don't, if you don't put yourself out there? So I was in the lift with him anyway, and we're going up. He was made, he'd made the following day. Yeah. I was like, he was in the room right beside me. He just seemed like a cool character. I yeah. go, hey, how are you getting on? Do you want to come for a drink? We end up going in and drinking whiskey till the early hours. <laughs> anyway, he he goes down. He busts the tournament, and that's actually yeah. he was actually at a table with Weish. Uh, Weish is another one of my best friends. Uh, he's in yeah. Calgary now, grinding out the PLO. Best of luck, Weish. Big shout out to you, sir. Yeah, Weish. I tell you, uh, uh, we went into the room, uh, we were drinking till, till the morning anyway, and uh, he went down, he bust, he had this crazy hand with, with Weech where they both knew what each other had in a yeah. very, I can't remember the exact board or the way it went down, but uh, they both had the same thought process in the river, and I found this fascinating when they were talking yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So he really liked us anyway, and then after he bust, he's like, can I, can I come come hang out with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> we were back to, the, back to our house at the time, and um, there was um, me, Weech, Paul Delaney, who I live with, one of my, my best friends. Uh, there was uh, Dave Taylor, do you know crazy yeah, Dave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big shout out to Dave Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the he, he comes back and um, it was rag week, so, do you know, party on or whatever. And uh, he ended up staying for nine days. Like, wow. He didn't know us from Adam. Like, and, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's how much uh, we, we got that's on with Tom. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so, he's, he's a real good guy, Tom. I yeah. really, really like Tom. I mean, he, he yeah. come, over, come over there... Uh, Two years in a row for my birthday from Scotland. Took yeah. 12, 12 or 13 hours. Other people wouldn't even come out and they're in Galway. Ah, and he's and an absolute gent. Like, yeah. I mean, you know. This, it's fantastic. So I'd say hopefully we we'll see more of 2E on the UK IPT circuit. Hopefully, and, uh, yeah, maybe yeah. at an EPT final. Yeah, game. yeah. But, whew, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'll take that. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, thanks a million for your time. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was an honour to have you here. Absolute pleasure. One of my heroes. Um, thanks a million. And, uh, I, to end the podcast, I have I have a special interview with Gavinator. And now for the main event of the evening, I'm joined by one of the top Irish players, Gavinator. Gavin O'Rourke, how are you getting on, Gav? Hi, Pig. Uh, you're 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 too kind with that. <laughs> so I suppose like straight away we get out of the way. Um, you were in Prague there at Christmas, and uh, you were playing spinning goals. Uh, yeah. For uh, for the people that don't know, spinning goals are they're these, they're like crack for poker players. <laughs> they're fifteen dollars, thirty dollars, sixty dollars, hundred dollars, uh, seven dollars, and uh, you were loading up a few of them every morning before you were playing or going to the gym, I suppose. And uh, you kind yeah. of got a big number one. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I I never played these before, like you know. Well, obviously, I played sitting goals before, is what I started off playing, like originally. Yeah. I and mean, when I got into online poker, but uh, obviously, it's totally different. These spinning goal things, like you know. But uh, I yeah. was just playing them basically to clear the pints at the end of the year for Supernova. Yeah. And I just felt like with the new stars uh, VIP system, you know, up in smoke, basically. Like I said, I might as well get the last big bonus out of it, so yeah. I decided to flick them in. They were quick, they were quick, obviously, to play Adam and a short period of time, so I could just build my points up quick, basically, is the only reason I was playing them. <laughs> yeah. And you were getting up, uh, what's say 16, you were getting up sets of four, and... Uh, yeah, that's all, yeah, and I was playing, like, between, I might play 12, or between 12 and 20, like, in the mornings, whatever way I was feeling, like, you know, or how much time I had. Yeah. Uh, I I play a few I'd I get up but get my breakfast early, come up to the room, play play for an hour and then hit the gym before I go to the the tournament, you know. Yeah. So I had I had a nice little routine going there for for like, you know, so I just kept waiting and uh head off. Tell, tell everyone how much the spinning goes for. <laughs> oh man. I'm still a bit reeling from it to be honest. I mean <laughs> We have to get out of the way at the start up, anyway, I Gav. I got heads up for a million, like, a you know. A million dollars. Like, yeah. can you explain what that was K, like? 900k bubble, like, you know. I mean, it's absurd. There's <laughs> very few people in the world that will ever get to have a 
a million dollars yeah. spinning goal or that feeling like so it must have been yeah. crazy exactly. and that's exactly the way i have to look at it i mean yeah you have to look at it. you got an okay consolation prize of a hundred thousand so i mean that's oh, not yeah. too bad you know yeah I mean, if you had said to me that morning, uh, log in there and you're going to win 100k in the next five minutes, I mean, you know, for five minutes work, I, I'd take it, you know. I would have took it, all right, yeah. Well, <laughs> super unlucky, I know, like, and then you had a run in the EPT then, straight after that. Yeah, and I was still in the EPT, I think it was like day four, I think it might have been day four, the EPT it was in, day five, it could have been, yeah. no, I think it was day four. So you're thinking, all right, I'm just going to bink this EPT now, and then it'll be all right. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah, I lost this, so it must happen now on the EPT, you know. But, it's per- <laughs> but pretty, this, pretty this disgusting like uh, to come 10th and 9th in an EPT in the same year. And um, and it, it looks like you've got like like big results from there, but like people don't see that, you know, the, they only see the glamorous side. Like, you know, when you're going around traveling to all these events, it must be tough, yeah. like, you know. Like, it's must be hard so it is tough when I, like you know i'm away from the family there quite a bit as well it's hard on them like especially on my wife there who's a home minding the yeah. kids like, you know? uh, but and then like you go to these trips and it's like you're going away working and but you don't come home with a wage at the end of the day like you know of course so yeah it would be pretty tough like um, it's a hard you know? way to make an easy living <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so how and did like, you how did you get into poker at the star Cav? I I've been always around poker. I mean, my my father uh, and my father's side of the family. I've always played like so. I've always been playing since I've been little, even if it was just with matchsticks or whatever, like you know. Yeah. But uh, it was always kind of draw poker back then. And when I I got into my teens, I mean, I think I might have been like twelve years of age or something. I used to go to the the pub with my father on a Saturday night, yeah. a, a local pub in a Thai and. Uh, they all, my father, uncles, aunties, they'd be playing poker down in the corner, like, you know, and I'd be playing pool. I, lo- I love to play pool, you know. Like, yeah. I'd have a tournament there every Saturday night, and, you know, it could be like 20 euros for the winner or whatever. On Christmas, then they'd be like tur- for turkeys and stuff like that. So th- my f- they'd be all playing poker down the corner, and, like, uh, I'd say if I finish up playing pool or whatever, and, uh, then my father will go to the title or, or, or something and I'll jump in and play <laughs> like you know and I was doing well and like he he, he kind of sit back maybe and have a chat with someone at the bar and have a few pints <laughs> if I was doing well you know yeah you you were always really really competitiveness is one thing I always admire about you your your drive your mental focus your the discipline even with your bankroll all that kind of thing I think mm. uh, you were good at any pub game or anything you put your mind to it's uh, it's really inspirational mm. really <laughs> I can find uh, it hard to get out of bed in the morning like you're already <laughs> fucking back from the gym yeah yeah yeah. I don't know, I mean, I've just been always around sports and into sports since I've been very young, like, I've always played, like, all sorts, soccer, hurling, you know, football, boxing, you know, yeah. and then all the pub games, kind of, like, pool, darts, you know, cards, it's just something, even a computer game when I was younger, like, I remember my cousins be, would, would have lots of uh, arguments over, you know, the, the Sega Mega Drive or whatever, the, the PlayStation 1, you know. You were always really good at anything you put your mind to anyway, like you can see see it in your work ethic and Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I kinda I, I kinda not so much I try to take the competitiveness over now at the moment. This is where I'm at now, like, you know, yeah. and just and just enjoy it, like I mean uh same with like so going to the gym and stuff, like I'm not worried if I miss like doing my say if I have a set program legs one day monday chest tuesday back thursday or shoulder friday if i miss the day like i'm not i'm not like worried about it as anymore where before i was uh oh man like i missed my back now i can't do it i'm not this week is fucked like you know yeah that can ty- can t- t- kind of take a hold of you like you just have to take a, a, a back back like my, ba- my back is still it. there next week <laughs> Yeah, yeah. so you know, so all your life like if poker's only a game at the end of the day, you can't let it consume your whole life. I, I definitely feel like I've been slightly obsessed with it in the past for sure. And then you can go the other way and then you're like, Oh fuck this and then you know, you don't mind play for a month or something and that can be good in one way, yeah. but it's also if you're feeling fresh, like you need to stay fresh and stay current. I, I see you, you used to read a lot of poker books and 
Um, yeah. I've always seen that. I added to your collection there when I was over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's funny, though, like, to get good at anything, you kind of do have to be obsessive about it at the start anyways. I mean, yeah. you know, that's... I remember when I first got... When I first learned in Texas Hall'em and realised you could make a living from this game, like, um, it's something I always... Like, even from when I was a young lad, going home, say, after the pub with my father or whatever, and we'd watch a uh, late night poker on Channel 4 or something. And, like, to be introducing, like, the likes of Devilfish or whatever, and this guy, it have a, he's a professional poker player, and then I'd be amazed by this. Like, I mean, how... <laughs> professional like is this his job you know yeah yeah like how do i want to do this when i get bigger you know <laughs> yeah. people but, uh, always see like the like how like the bracelets and how much money people have won but they don't see the other side you know it's it's a it's, yeah, important, it's, funny, yeah. it's important to know both sides of it like and i i think you were always good at like being able to manage the money i, I wasn't so good at that side myself i'm trying to get better i suppose well, <laughs> yeah, not too bad <laughs> Just a uh, just a little lad in a full tail poker jumper, and <laughs> so I met you. I remember it. Was it yeah. to David Scully? Oh, you introduced me to this guy. I, I never knew anyone to be uh, play, playing fifteen tables. You know, <laughs> the white the white tracks of one with the white hoodie and the white headphones. <laughs> the gray the gray white hoodie. The gray white hoodie. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was your nickname. And um, so you were traveling with Mark McDonald. He had a he had a lot of success. I'd say we'd have to get him on the podcast at some point. Yeah, Mark's a good guy. I've done a bit of travel with him during the last couple of years and stuff like, you know, with yeah. Vegas and uh, it's been a lot of time in Vegas and that and yeah, he's doing really well and seems to have a good head in his shoulders and stuff and you know, he's he's uh, he's running well right now and hopefully yeah. he can get some some big results, you know. Hopefully I'll be joining you at some point anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he's a, he's a great stack in that uh, EPT as well, like the, you know, it was pretty exciting for the two of us to be deep at the same time, you know. Yeah, I seen he did a horrendous uh, hand, all right. That was pretty rough, like. Yeah, it was, I felt bad for him there, you know. That was, yeah, I don't think there's anything he could do, though, really. I mean, it's just these things happen, you know. It's just the way, the way it played out. Well, yeah. I think one thing about Mark I, I found, uh, you know, pretty pretty good was, like, he, the, how, he, how he handled that, like, you know. It didn't seem to phase him whatsoever, like, you know what I mean. Yeah. He was over basically within, you know, five ten minutes. You know, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just such a ruthless game. You have to get over it. Even though I think it's yeah. um, what we were saying, like it's like if you're playing playing online, you could just load another table. But when you're traveling to all these places, I mean, I haven't I haven't gone to Vegas or any of these like really expensive mm. trips myself yet. But I I think it's like a poker come down there when you're knocked out or something like that like i think it, i'd be up in my room anyway i wouldn't want to talk to anyone for a little while or you yeah. know i'd be at the bar yeah i mean i used to think like that but like no like there's just really is no point like i mean it doesn't serve you as personally to be thinking about these things like i mean you made your decision and that's it and after that it's out of your hands you know yeah so there's no point really dwelling and i see and a lot of players as well do that as well you know they're really straight to the bar and pressed, you know, it takes a while to come around, but I mean, mm. you know, it's not really doing your, you or your game any good, like, thinking like that, I mean, it, it is what it is, I mean, yeah. you know, it's a cooler and that's it, like, go on to the that's next it. one, you know. Yeah, that's where, that, that's where it's, it's hard to get to that point in your mind, I mean, to be able to do that, like, but yeah, I guess it's just from years of playing and going through losing spells and coming out of them, you know, I mean, that's, gives you that confidence to, to, do, to be able to do that you know that's what i was just about to say like i think that's where fitness comes into play like if you if you're like, yeah. working on your mind and like i don't really do meditation or anything myself like yeah so book. i'm just trying to get into that at the minute myself i mean <laughs> so. i'm reading a good book there at the moment the, the conquest of happiness uh a really good friend of mine yeah. sean one of the most intelligent people i know put me onto that now uh, i highly recommend that. It's like just different yeah. things like about like how like human emotions and uh, the way we live our lives like play a big role in our happiness and we just need to take a back foot sometimes and just relax are you going to take more of a relaxed approach towards this year on online and live or yeah definitely like well talking about being relaxed and stuff and uh, i i find found like recently like that uh um kind of like the more you want something, or the more you you're 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 working for it as hard, like, and you know you're doing your best, and yeah. the more emotional impact it has on you when it doesn't happen. You know, it's like 
course. Every time, every time you look, you're, you're in a plane there on a Sunday, you know, you're hoping for a big score, and you know, every time it doesn't happen, which is a lot. Yeah, and yeah. It's taken, it's taken a lot more out of it every time, you know. Yeah. It's got so, to do with the and I find out, yeah. I find out that the more relaxed you are and kind of just enjoy your playing, enjoy the game, and and you know, the more it comes, to, the more easier it comes to you, you know. Like yeah. I, I went to Prague now before I even was thinking about anything like this, and I, I just went to the Prague with in the mindset where I had nothing to lose and just get in and play my best I can and, you know, and just enjoy playing the live game. I mean, it's something I've wanted to do for so, for so long. I mean, I have a full-time job there for 11 years, you know. Yeah. And I didn't like the job at all. So, I mean, and now I'm here and I'm, I'm able to do it. Like, I might as well just relax and enjoy it, you know. Yeah, especially, there's a lot of pressure there. You have a big family and it's coming up to Christmas. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's not all, like... <laughs> sunshine yeah. and rainbows like i mean it's, no. it's very easy to say like oh to have no emotional connection towards the the sundays or the big the big tournaments <laughs> but i mean it's it's tough when you've all the other surroundings in your life come into play like so um, yeah no it really is like i mean but you just can't think about it like i mean yeah you've always you know, got like, the drawing anyway gav you're you did, oh, yeah. did some <laughs> lovely illustrations for me there for the podcast so thanks very much oh, yeah. if you exactly. ever need, need a drawing lads uh hit gav up he's good at the old cartoons yeah i got into it a good bit i went i went to, i got i it's sort of a thing i come and go from like you know yeah it's fun like i I guess spout, spouts of inspiration. I guess I don't know. Like every now and again, you're an enigma. Or I, I never knew when I all the years I, I knew you or and lived with you. I, I never knew you were good at drawing. There's always something. That's I, what I'm saying. I hadn't. I didn't do it for years. You know. Yeah, I remember you stood up at one of your breaks there in the war room one time, and you just uh, picked up darts and you were pissed off, and you just threw a 180, and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? Like. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, yeah, so, so uh, uh, are you going to play a big T coop? I'm gonna play as much as I can. I mean, I'm yeah. trying to play. I try and play five days a week is now at the minute, like you know. Uh, so finding the right balance, like exactly, yeah. So it's pretty good now. I'm going good at the minute. Um, heads in a good space, so hopefully we can uh, put a few. Uh, like I had my biggest losing uh, downswing ever on stars like you know yeah. online really and in the last year and a half so even though li live went pretty pretty good uh online has been horrendous like you know yeah. so uh, it's something i'm working on my game now again uh for online and stuff uh, work uh, just trying to catch up on a few things you know yeah definitely so there's there's the run at one site is good for the videos and you know it's just trying yeah, to, yeah. i'm trying to learn more the maths because it's mm. all maths at the end of the day. I know, like everything on the surface, it looks so it's everything else, but uh, I mean, it all comes down to the maths, really. Like, yeah, definitely online, like, and then yeah. like. Oh, yeah, not live, yeah. I'd have like to. A lot, a lot more people. Uh, it, it's all it seems to be going towards GTO strategies now, like you know. Yeah, so. that's game theory optimal for you guys. I suppose uh, we we give Joey Ingram's podcast a shout out as well. There's where you got, got the GTO <laughs> thing from, anyway. Um, oh yeah, don't worry about that. I, I only learned that recently myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Every day is a learning day, Gav, you know. Um, so are, did you get through to the phase three that's on in a few days for the T coop? That's going to be massive. To yeah, yeah it's funny. I, I, just, I, I got through on uh, the Tuesday night, I think. I was playing Super Tuesday and stuff. And I just it popped up, I've seen in the lobby where the stars were promoting this overlay of it, like, you know. So I said, oh, I might as well flick this in. I ended up I made the, the phase three and yeah, so I'm in, I'm in where like, I think I have between 25, 30 bigs or something. Yeah, that's going to be a good one now. But see, see, you wouldn't know how many good players are getting to I see, see there's a uh, good to 6,000 in there, but I mean, it's hard to make the phase three. So for anyone that doesn't know, you play a phase one and then you get into phase two and then you yeah. get, in, get through your phase two into phase three. I actually have 120 big blinds coming back, so hopefully yeah. I'll be excited nice. about that one, yeah. So hopefully you're on for a good run. See you on a few T Coop final tables anyway. So the six thousand players you need you need a bit of run good now to be fair. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and a turbo. So uh, who who'd be your favourite poker player, Gav? Uh I don't know. I don't I can't say I really have one. I mean 
I guess live, I mean, I like the, the top guys, obviously. I mean, everybody likes it. I mean, Daniel Legrand, old Helmut, uh, yeah. Phil Ivey, obviously. Tony G. Do you feel my power, baby? <laughs> uh, I don't know about Tony. Tony's a bit loud for me, you know. I'm a quiet guy, I guess. So. <laughs> yeah, they don't... <laughs> To show you, baby, don't get no sweets, I suppose. <laughs> oh, Steve, Steve with the wire, obviously, doing really well, you know? I mean, Absolute kill it. Sick of hair, yeah. was, uh, I, I met him a couple of times and he seemed to be a really nice guy and stuff, like, you know? So Definitely, yeah. He's, yeah. he's an absolute genius, yeah. I think I, mine, mine would be online, uh, probably just overall, it'd be Jabra Kata, like, uh, like that's Tom. Oh, Jabra, yeah. All, yeah. I mean, really nice guy as well, you know. He's it's a really nice pack. guy, yeah. His work yeah. ethic is just off the charts. Like he yeah. plays everything all around the world the whole year, and he still has right. so much volume online. And um, he's the first person to have made a, a million profit at the lowest buy in there. So yeah, Congra- congrats to you, Jabra. Well played, sir. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, yeah. Gav. Well, uh, thanks very much for joining us, and uh, really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you a few final tables throughout the year. I'll see, see you in yeah. the next cartoon, sir. No problem, Pig. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Okay, so that's going to just about do it for episode one of the Pig's Kitchen podcast. This is more of an introduction than anything else. So I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down and see what else I've got cooking in my kitchen. I've lots of ideas and great guests in the pipeline. Join me on the next episode where I will be interviewing another one of Ireland's top poker players, Big Mick G. I will be giving a rundown of the tea coop action and for house music's fans I will be joined by Steve Baker aka Ninja Tips and producer Robert Malloy. I'm Dan Rankin, you've been a great audience. <laughs>